goodness me, where do we start with this? Spurs Liverpool yesterday. Luis Diaz scored nil nil. Ref flags for offside. Ref doesn't intervene, even though Diaz was onside, and it's pretty obvious ever he was onside. Massive inquests over at PGMOL, who've released a statement saying it was human error for not intervening in Diaz's goal. There are also a few other things going on. Ref overturning a yellow to a red for Curtis Jones after VAR intervention. Uh, Simon Hooper, the ref, also gave two yellows to Yogo Jota, even though you may argue that first yellow, Destiny Doggy seemed to trip himself up. I'm like... And everybody today is just going, this is VAR at its lowest. It's never been worse. And referees, past referees and current referees must all have their heads in their hands going, oh dear, we're really copping for it. So, who's going to cop for it this morning? Dermot Gallagher, who's here to explain why refereeing isn't in the gutter. Morning, Dermot. Hello, is he there? I got you, Sean. Can you hear me? I can, Dermot. Yes, thanks for joining us. Dermot, you must feel as a referee this morning that you don't want to walk out the front door because everybody's going, you refs, useless. <laughs> well, I know not it's not you to blame, but it, it reflects on the community, surely, Dermot. Yeah, but I think you've got to you got to look at the positives. You've got to look what they can take out of it. It's, uh, what's ha- Sean, what's happened has happened. We can't change history. We can only ch- mould the future. But... Um, uh, if you look at last night, I mean, the biggest talking point for I don't know how long it's going to run is obviously going to be the, the Diaz goal. Mm-hmm. Um, Adrian Holmes thought it was offside. Yeah, when I watched it, I didn't have any problem when I see it live. But, um, so he's flagged offside. Bear mm-hmm. in mind, if we had no VAR, that would be offside anyway. Absolutely, yes. Um, and we so, probably wouldn't be talking about it today. We'd probably be saying, well, that was a close call, but hey, that's absolutely. the way it goes. That, that's my point exactly, Sean. You know, mm-hmm. and that, that's how life has evolved, you know. And, um, because it's evolved, we have to live with, um, you know, Pandora's box is open and mm. everything that goes with it. You look at um, what happened next, you know, Darren Ing has looked at it. I think he's just made an error of judgment. He's got confused. He's seen the, he's put the lines on, looked at the player. He's realised he's flagged offside and he's checked it very, very quickly because it was a quick check. Um, unfortunately, he's, it's a misjudgment. Diaz is onside. It should have been reversed by VAR and a goal given. Um, the follow-up to that, you know, obviously the PJMO have come out and said there'll be an investigation. Well, everybody expects that because, you know, it's a very, very uh, big, big mistake and it's got to be investigated and we'll see what happens throughout the week. Just before I let Henry dive in here, after the match, Jurgen Klopp addressed the media about his frustrations with the decision. I don't think we should um, talk too much about that because it doesn't help at all. So, um, Wolves had got a similar statement apology i don't even know i didn't see it yet well so, um they didn't get a points a point against united if i'm right so we will not get anything out of that today so it doesn't help we have to work all together um on the subject that we make right decisions and um, i'm pretty sure nobody is making mistakes on purpose but it still happened it's not not in this moment not my i don't know why so um but yeah we would have scored fantastic goal would have changed the game. I don't know. I don't know. Probably because uh, goals usually help. But he scored a goal anyway, um, so that's good. Quite reserved for Jurgen Klopp there, I thought. Now um, Henry's got about 150 points to make here, Dermot. So I'll uh, <laughs> I'll unleash the hound. Henry, Henry, but be good to me. It wasn't me, <laughs> Dermot. First, thanks for coming on. It's fantastic to hear from referees. You've been in the middle. What would happen if we were like more mature sports and actually had um, the audio being played live? You know, the conversations might up because this is essentially about communication. This, if it was played live into the ground, so that the fans understood and we in the media understood more what was going on, the thought process, and obviously the mistakes along the way. Well, I think the one thing about Howard Webb coming in, Henry, is, you know, since December last year when he's come in, he's been open, he's been transparent. The Premier League and himself are at the cutting edge. They want to move things forward. We've already seen uh, the programme mic'd up where we saw Howard with Michael Owen. Um, They relayed the the audio and it was fantastic. And I think what it did, I I saw friends of mine the next day said, we had no idea how much input there is, you know, how much concentration is from these guys. Um, With this one, I don't think there's any doubt whatsoever. They'll be uh, checking out audio today, seeing what happened, working out root cause and remedy. How did this happen? How are we going to make sure it never, never, never happens again? And 
how do we get the officials back in the right place? Because I can tell you, Henry, you know, in my career, I'm, I made some mistakes. And I, when I found out, I just beat myself up. It's, it's not one of these where people think you can walk away and just laugh with your mates. It's not like that. It's such personal pride. And you need to be very, very strong, resilient mentally to put yourself back in that position and say, well, I'm going to go again. I think that's all part of the process now over the following week. Yeah, I, I understand that. And obviously we have to understand and have some empathy for the fact that uh, referees and their families are going to be in the crosshairs over this. And we saw what happened with sort of Anthony Taylor after the, uh, the the European final. And, you know, we have to treat officials with respect. But why, when we look at the Champions League and we look at the, the World Cup in Qatar and arguably in, in Russia as well, it VAR worked. Is it simply down to the standard of refereeing in this country? Uh, not at all. I, I think um, VAR works. Um, the problem is, Henry, is there was mistakes in all them competitions you said. There was decisions that we didn't agree with. And that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? With subjective, I know this is a factual decision, but with subjective decisions, there's always going to be that element where you think penalty, I think not. There's always going to be that. And we will always see it like that. But with this, I mean, it's just a factual human error, isn't it? He's He's completely you know, he's he's forgotten who's onside, who's offside. He's been almost seduced by Adrian Holmes's flag um, for whatever reason. Whether he's tried to do it too quickly, I don't know. But he, he's just made an error. And what I would say is the PGM have been great. They've come out and acknowledged that immediately. You know, they haven't fudged the issue. Uh, look, I think that's great. And as you say, they're far more transparent now under Howard Webb than under Mike Riley. But look, I've come out of sort of Champions League weeks and out of Qatar for the World Cup. And I was thinking... VAR works there. Why does it not so work in work as well in the Premier League? Is the quality of refereeing being spread too thin? Obviously, having more individuals at Stockley Park, obviously they're under far more scrutiny. Do we need to be investing more at grassroots level to bring another generation of referees through? Well, that, that's been done, Henry, without doubt. You know, Alan Wiley has been charged with the ERDP, which the Premier League are funding. His task with his coaches and uh, staff are to go out to find these guys and we've seen under Howard Webb we've seen a massive massive change in that direction where people who are National League referees are now refereeing in the Football League Football League referees are now refereeing in the Championship and Championship referees Josh Smith last week refereeing in the Premier League now that never happened in my day what it was was you had to do that season if you are in the top three or whatever in that season you might get promoted um, you never when I was coming through, you know, in the 80s, I would never referee above my level in the same season. Now, if you look at a player, Mike Lowen, 17, 18 years old, suddenly gets in the Liverpool team, suddenly playing for England as a teenager. It, that never happened as a referee because it was always, you know, you've got to do so many years, you've got to do so many years. That's happening now. We're seeing younger referees come through. and um, We've seen the age demographic on the Premier League is starting to drop year by year because, you know, the old guard like myself have gone and the new referees are, are coming through. Just on that, what one of the old guard is, is Darren Can, who is a fantastic assistant, Champions League finals, World Cup finals. He was a former Crystal Palace reserve, and I think he got injured and his career couldn't develop as a player. He then went into officiating. Should Howard Webb, and, and, and you'll tell me the PGMO are already doing this, but they, should they, they be looking at kids who are coming out of the academy, whether injury, whatever talent, they're not necessarily going to make it as a professional, but they've got a feel for the game. They've grown up with the, sort of, you know, the laws and the disciplines and an understanding of the game. Do you think we should be tapping into more of those and maybe fast-tracking them through from that sort of late teen era? That, as you say, that is happening, Henry. There's no doubt about that. Um, people like that being identified. You know, Chris Foy is tasked to, to find out these people. Only the other week, Jamie Reid of Stevenage rang me and said, you know, is there a way I can get into referee and I'm coming to the end of my career? You know, I've, and I put him in, in touch with them people, so people like that. But I think you make a great point there about the academy boys because, you know, they're fresh in, fresh out, if you like. Um, the danger is with a senior player that, if he goes into refereeing, when you start out refereeing, no matter how much you're fast-tracked, it's a very, very low-income industry. So suddenly, if you get an offer to go into coaching, even if it's in the academies, you know, the lure of going back into pro football is too much. So that, that can be a, mm. a hazard there. Whereas, as you say, with the young people, that's not so much because they can go in there, develop and get through on the leagues.
Tillman, just just to go back to the decision itself again, I hate comparing football with rugby and saying they've got it right, football has got it wrong, but there is one fundamental thing that happens in rugby and the, the guy who's on VAR talks to the ref and then he goes, award the goal or disallow the try. This here seems to be just check complete. So there wasn't any clarification either of what the check complete was about. Well, we saw on the screen, didn't we? We saw they're checking for offside, you know that. Um, no, but he could have said, award the goal. But he didn't say it, because if, if we think the referee's just lost his way here and he isn't sure what was given, or goal given or not given, it could have just been clarified by the guy on VAR. But he did, Sean, and, and that, that's where the mistake occurred. Did he? Because by saying check complete... He no, 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 he but was... he said check complete, award the goal. He could have added, award the goal, and then there wouldn't have been, oh, right, yeah, award the goal, that's right. Then we wouldn't oh, be in this obviously. situation. Yeah, but but that's what they do. The mistake, that, absolutely, but that that was the perfect scenario, wasn't it? His, his perfect scenario was, uh, in my opinion, Derm, you know, Diaz is onside. You can award the goal, check yes. complete. But, but unfortunately, he? he 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 got it wrong. He felt it was offside, and that's what he checked. He he checked completed the wrong decision. That's all he. Mm. That's all he uh, transmitted back. Dermot, just very quickly, is is there a case for, this all comes down to communication, is there a case for referees just sort of working almost like a sort of four or five man team throughout the season rather than rotating? Well, I think uh, on the field, there's a lot of that, isn't it? You know, Michael, Michael Love has his team, uh, lots of different guys go with the team. That's what I did. But um, with a VAR? Um, it's more difficult, isn't it? Because the guys that are not refing, they're the ones who do the VAR. So, you're a little bit hamstrung there because what you're doing, you're tying certain people to VAR if a, if a guy's refereeing. Well, it might be that Howard wants him out refereeing. He, he might want next week certain 10 out refereeing and that leaves the other eight to be fourth officials, VAR, such like. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's difficult to juggle these people like that. It's easier to juggle them with their assistants, you know, so they have teams there because the, the biggest team has to come from the three on field and... Whether you have VAR or not, um, Sean, they, the biggest thing they want is on-field decisions. That's one thing that Howard's very, very strong on. He wants on-field decisions. Now, we accept with on-field decisions there's going to be mistakes. We get that. But um, certain things, you know, like last week, if a, a guy's sent to the screen and he comes back and he still sticks with his on-field decision, you might not agree with it, but I think people will accept that a lot more because it's the on-field referee. So I, I don't think people want this constant parachute of VAR and the team of VARs because I don't think it's healthy.